The Narrow Neck Reef is a geotextile bag reef and its primary objective was coastal protection. The road across Naranek was built in 1921 by the main road. It was the Pacific Highway to Sydney, but the trouble is to miss the river, they pushed it out onto the dune, so it's always been a, an area that's very narrow. In 1999, my company won the tender for the Northern Gold Coast Beach Protection Strategy, which had a number of elements. The primary one was nourishment, and it was really a repeat of what was done in 1974. We had the new control structure which was built in 86, which was the Gold Coast Seaway. So what we wanted was another control point just this side of Surface Paradise. We looked at groins, we looked at beach dewatering, you know, widening the dunes, and the one that came out best was a submerged artificial reef. Without the added bonuses of surfing and diving, it was clearly the best solution. Why a reef? A reef is a coastal engineer's dream in a way in that you can reduce the wave energy without having to stop all the wave energy and a reef does that perfectly by breaking the waves and dissipating the energy. We've constructed a structure that you can't see but it's constantly reducing the sand transport and the storm cut so we have a wider beach, a more stable beach. So the lifeguards can use the stability inshore of the reef to plant their flags in the best spot. The Australian dredging industry was developed on the Gold Coast. McQuaid won the contract for dropping the sandbags. He had bought in a split hull hopper barge that he developed specifically for doing this type of work. He hired local Gold Coast boys who understood the surf and they would actually bring the dredge in between sets and they would position it exactly right where they'd have someone looking behind them to check when the next wave would be breaking over the stern. It was a lot of fun building that. It was built on tiers, so the boat would come in, drop a bag, move out. It would then dredge sand up into the bag, and it was filled on board, and then it would come out and it was dropped out the bottom. It was just an endless job keeping up with the number of bags, and then when it was finished, we had to do monitoring to see what was happening, both up the beach and down the beach. And to work it all in together, the surveyors were very, very busy. The difference between a geotextile structure and a concrete or rock structure is the type of growth. We get a very soft growth which is again safe for surfers but it's also better for diving and better for the environment because we get a, a much more diverse habitat. 10 metres of water we're getting kelps, we're getting turtles and I've dived with dolphins. We took one of the top marine biologists in Australia for a swim out there one day and before he went in the water he said it's just going to be another fish attractor, I can tell you that now Angus. When he came back he said you've done it, the geotextile is what makes the difference. The data that's been collected over the last 10 years from video cameras and other measurements that have been taken at Naranek clearly show that it's been a highly successful device or structure for maintaining the health of the beach in terms of the beach width and that's been its primary objective.